What's it like being back in Chinatown after all these years, Paul? Some things have changed because initially when you come out of Grand Street Station, there would be this fishmongers and oh, yeah. the smell would permeate through the air and it would seep onto the ground and, uh, and yeah, so it was... It's all gone. Yeah, I'm surprised that it is gone. Um, so there is Grand Street, which we came out of, and then there's also Canal Street, which is also servicing Chinatown. But I think for now, this is coming up to the Bowery, which is a main thoroughfare. Um, and I think that we should be checking out the hotel where we always used to stay. A very good idea. There seems to be a lot of construction work going around. Chinatown is becoming more of a upcoming area to live and I'm sure it's very expensive to live here. So I think the developers are pouring a lot of money in to reap the rewards that this great area has to offer. The Bowery was always known as the lighting district isn't that right yes it was and it's because there were so many electrical shops and uh, places that sold light fittings in fact there's uh, oh, over there leroy or leonard's electrics lighting showroom times lighting oh. so they still exist So when we stayed at the Pioneer, it was still partly um, rent controlled and that meant that there were some rooms where people were permanent residents and their rent could never go up. Um, and sometimes we would bump into the same people. And what was the name of the engineer guy who always made sure that we got a TV that worked? Was it Curtis or was it someone else? Oh, I can't remember, but there's this guy, he was so helpful that because I was coming over so often, um, I would visit New York every month to two months for seven years before Paul moved over to the UK. And for about the first three or four of those years, I always stayed right here. Um, so they got to know us and not all the rooms were equal. Some of them had en suites, most of them didn't. And the TV in each room would, well, it some worked better than others but this guy always made sure that we got one that was in good working order they didn't have this bar area here back then this must be new and i think we did stay there when it became the so hotel and it looks did we pretty, i think so it looks in pretty good condition uh now it's uh -huh. it's gone up in the world uh -huh. and the area that we're in it's got a bit of a, a identity crisis because the hotel has called itself the So Hotel, but we're not actually in Soho. That is the Bowery up there, and it's sort of sandwiched between Chinatown and Little Italy. Yes. And the first time that we ever met, we went for a meal at one of the Italian restaurants, and I can remember I had the uh, it was marinara, wasn't it? Chicken, was it chicken marinara. No, you had the. Creamy one. Yes, that's it. Creamy. No, it was the uh, carbonara. Oh, carbonara. That's right. Okay, so let's cross over the street as we walk along Elizabeth Street. 
This is called Broom Street, the one that we're on right now. Oh yes, Broom Street, that's right. And the next one coming up is Mock Do you remember, Street. there is this nice place that does Vietnamese coffee. Oh yes, and I used to We need to one, go there for that. I used to get one of their uh, sam the Vietnamese sandwich as well. Would you like to get one now? No, because I think we have to have our dim sum. Oh, there's the Broom Street fire. But I think, House. I think I need to go in for one of their coffees. Oh, it's still here. And look, there's the sandwich. So what do we think? It's really strong and it's, it is actually quite sweet. Because Vietnamese coffee, they use the condensed milk, which gives it that sweetiness. Ah, right, I see. I don't remember it being as strong as this before. Maybe you were too accustomed to it back then. Ah, yes. But it does give you a good shot of caffeine to get you going in the morning. Because we do have a lot to do today, do we not? I've got a lot to do every day. So we are walking along Mott Street, going into the heart of Chinatown. I think that Canal Street is like maybe one or two more streets over. Okay, and by the time we reach there, it'll be time for dim sum. Mm -hmm. Looking a little bit more busy now. Do you smell the bushiness, dear? Oh yeah, I smell it now. This might be a fresh batch. It was full of fish. Half full. Lots of very interesting food stalls and food markets. Marcus? Yes? It doesn't this make London's Chinatown look puny and tiny? Yes, because the, you know, the entire... How many square miles A lot. Chinatown here? A lot. <laughs> it takes up like a vast swathe of land. Yes, it does. I don't know what veg this is. Looks scary. The hanging meat. <gasps> No, I don't think we're having that, are we? Oh, look! Here's a sign for Little Italy. So you see how the different areas just merge. It's amazing. So we're standing in Chinatown, and right there is Little Italy. We used to come to a dim sum restaurant called Grand Harmony Palace, and according to the internet it has closed down. Might have been either this one or a little, I think it was a little bit further along. I think it was bigger than this. Was it, was it on Mott Street? It was on Mott Street. Ah. This is Mott Street. Is it this one? But this is new. Not straight paper. Well, they seem to do dim sum, so maybe we should go in here. What do you think? I think that it was this one. I think it was too. So, why don't we see what the name of it is again? Mop. Street Eatery. This is a Canal Street. Look how vast it is. Oh my god. There is that restaurant over there called big wall. I used to go there to have um, really fast Chinese food. Like they would basically uh, cut up the meat and then they would serve it 
to you with a bed of rice or something. I always remember that that 65 Bayard Street original Chinatown ice cream factory. The Chinatown ice cream factory is definitely an institution in Chinatown. I would definitely recommend it because they have weird and wonderful flavors for you to explore. So the other restaurant that used to be the one we went to didn't have a toilet. So <laughs> we're not going to a restaurant with no toilet. So we're going to go to the House of Joy no, instead. it right? is the House of Jade. You sure? It says Joy. Does it? Yeah. House of Joy. Oh. I think we will just get a close up of the name just to prove that I'm right. Thank goodness for the glorious AC because it is so hot outside at the minute that I can hardly walk. So, we are going to have the full dim sum experience, aren't we Paul? Are we? So what do we do? We have a order form. And the lady is bringing us over some tea just now. But they also okay. <laughs> have the classic trolleys. Do you want um? Do you want the meatballs? Uh, I'm just getting a fork because I'm no good at chopsticks. Clean your cup, Paul. Are you going to pour your tea? The plates too, my dear. I need to pour for you first. It, it is full up. I'm, I'm spilling it everywhere. Hello, I'm okay, I'm going to attempt this. This is one of my favorite dishes. <laughs> um, it's a it's a beef strip, but it's called No Chong. Is that right, Paul? No Chong. No Chong. Okay, that would be good enough. What I really love about this is the sweet soy sauce. Oh yes. And I like to savour it and save it for the other dishes as well, which don't come with the sauces. Are you still hungry? No. I'm just mm, licking my lips because this is so delicious. Well, we have only had four dishes and I'm feeling utterly stuffed. Um, I don't know whether it's because of my age or whether because of my diabetes type stuff that I'm thinking about all this stuff, but I think I am kind of full, which is a good thing. Um, so yeah, look, I we still have the... the Hagao, the shrimp balls, and one shuma. So I think that that's quite good, I think. You know, there is one thing that I will say about this. These pieces are ginormous. This isn't the size that you would get in London, I swear. It would be like maybe half the size or something. We hope you're enjoying this show. Please stay tuned for more after the break. I wanna make you shit.
Thank you for watching our show today. If you like what you see, please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>have come to the world famous Brooklyn Brewery we for sure a tasting session. No time for tours, we're going to get straight to the beer. Yes, we're going to get straight stuck in. So come join us. Okay, so this is a nice selection of Brooklyn Brooklyn Brewery. Um, so this is called a flight. We have a flight each. We have a flight to catch. Again? <laughs> Didn't we just get off a flight? I know. Anyway, we've been given this little cheat order sheet. cheat sheet, and you're supposed to follow the follow your choose your own flight and follow a flight path. Okay, so From which one, one two, do you have? Three, four. So I've got the East IPA, the Stonewall, which is a limited edition for the Excellent. Stonewall Inn, the Summer Eel, and the Lager. And you have? And I have, um, number one is the, the Soft Shoe IPA. It looks very pale, so maybe this one isn't that strong i think they go in order of strength perhaps and then the pulp um, art double so this is like more alcohol in here because it's double and then we have the harlem hopes okay this looks like a stout so this is gonna be this is gonna taste like one of those newcastle ales or something mm. like this. this looks kind of dark almost like a guinness and then this is the pulp art ipa sort of similar to the second one, but then the second one was a double. So, do you think I should start? Uh, Will you start at number one? Do we oh. start with a higher percentage from me? Well, yeah. you, you follow the path, so he said to start at number one. But I'm not gonna chug it. Oh no. Unless you want to do a bit of each one and keep keep going round and round. Do you want to start? In that one? way, it could be like arriving at Heathrow, where you keep going. Oh my to, god! The flight just keeps circling. <laughs> okay. So which one are you? Okay, so number one, I have got the shoe. East IPA. Cheers, Cheers. everyone. Cheers, camera Cheers, person. Cameraman. Okay, so the first one, it tastes kind of citrusy. Definitely IP material, I think. Mine tastes quite strong. This is definitely a summer drink. Or you can have it at any time. Of course. Maybe it's a session. <laughs> a soft shoe. Oh, soft shell. That's what it says. I hope that's what it is. Does it taste of feet? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go for the second one. So the second one is a Pulp Art Double. For okay. you. Of course, we've got a different flight each. So I'm not connecting with you, am I? No, mine is a, the stone wall. Oh, I'm not sure about this. It's, I can't even... I'm trying to... There's a, there's a weird kind of taste of it. Okay, let me give you my first impressions. I've had a sip already.
It definitely does taste a lot stronger. Well, we're going up in strength. A lot stronger and a bit more potent. Um, and not as refreshing. I'm not saying that it's that it's bad. I'm saying that it's stronger and there's more there's more body to it. Kind of like wine, I guess. And apologies to Stonewall, but um, I don't really particularly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't order that. I'm glad I just got the sample one. Oh dear. I, yes. I don't think I would want a whole pint of it. Okay, so number this three for you. Harlem hopes. Okay, this looks rather ominous. It looks all dark and cloudy. <laughs> and I've gone for the summer eel. I bet you that yours is gonna taste better. Mmm, this one goes down well. It's rather light. The reason I got this was because I don't normally see this outside. So, you know, it's all about trying what's new and different, I think. Mm. Okay, psych myself up. Okay, this is, this is gonna be good. You haven't tried it yet? No. Okay, this tastes kind of chocolatey. It oh. tastes, it tastes somewhat smooth. I also taste some molasses, and I think I taste some. Um, That's very specific. No, and I, I think I also taste uh, a caramel of some sort. I don't know. I haven't read what's in the ingredients back there, but that is what comes across. Okay. You want to know? And on to the no, last don't one. Don't tell me yet. On to the last one. The Pulp Art IPA. And I've just gone for a straight up lager. Okay, cheers again. Mmm. Mmm, this is like quite sweet. It's like almost like a toffee effect to it. This one tastes very summery, very refreshing, and not as potent as the last two that I've had. Um, it tastes kind of citrusy. I think the first one also tastes citrusy. So let's see what else I could see. It tastes like an IPA. It tastes kind of hoppy, which is good. Mm. But I can't really tell the difference between this one and this one. Oh, okay. But it's oh, equally but, as good, I think. But I thought two and four for you were the more similar ones rather than one and four. So they were both pulp, pulp art. But the lager goes down really well, I think. I mean... It, I should have gotten a lager. I, I wouldn't <laughs> normally go for a standard lager at a, at a pub, but this is a bit different. You know, I think for me, I do normally like to have lagers because it's kind of like the beers that I would have at home. And now, of course, because we've got four different ones each, we have to, to swap. And then we swap or no swap. <laughs> deal or no deal. Let's see what you think of my choices. And that will be off camera. So we've now switched, well we've switched back again, but you tried mine and I tried yours and I quite like number one and we have since discovered Me too. we both like this and this is really shocking news everyone. Shocking. It's breaking news. It's only not 0.5% alcohol. Zero point. So this is a low alcohol beer and it was one of our favourite ones. So it just goes to show that low alcohol beers can actually taste pretty good. I am totally impressed. I think as a diabetic, I think I need to have this one. It, it had all the qualities of a beer. So I was, so I was basically just looking at the list. I didn't really look at the 
percentages mm. because normally I do look at the percentages but then this time I said okay just go one two three four and then so there you go you can choose am, this I am gobsmacked it's like what still in shock there you go drink up mm, not all of it <laughs> <laughs> you can finish it. In one. That sounds like Bullseye. In one. Oh, this is good. So when you come to the Brooklyn Brewery, you can order from Mabel's and they will deliver it straight to your table. So what have we got, Paul? What do we have? We have wings. Oh, lovely. We have... Oh, this is sausage. sausage. Oh, lovely sausage. More wings. And this is, this is the brisket. And then we have side. Oh, brisket. Brisket and side. Mac and cheese. Barbecue beans. A nice little potato salad. And cornbread. Uh -huh. Bon appetit. 